my fuck it moment was, I think me and Lauren were um, in a meeting with some people I were, was recently signed to. For those of you who don't know, Lauren is my manager and she's also my best friend and my business partner. Um, people think we're like two childhood best friends, but she actually found me on the internet when I was 18. And um, there was some problems, there was some chaos, and um, they pretty much wanted me to sacrifice my artistry and who I was. And we were finally sitting down in one room. I'm usually very nice and I'm very cordial and I'm very polite and I have a lot of manners and I stay silent and I'll tell Lauren how I feel afterwards and she'll go and start a fire. But this time I just like laid down the law and I like stomped my foot down and I got up and I walked out of this meeting and I was like, fuck all of you. And I left and I feel like that was the start of our new journey with better people to work with. So sometimes you just gotta tell people to go fuck themselves and walk out of the meeting. The bedroom tour playlist was kind of not me rebelling, kind of a little bit, but just showing what I can do. And it was kind of giving me that sense of freedom because the Bad Intentions EP was the first project I put out and it was very much so um, dictated by the people who were above me. And I felt like I really had to sacrifice a lot of my songs and a lot of my music and it made me really upset. And so the Bedroom Talk playlist was kind of me like kind of getting back at everyone and being like, hey, fuck everybody, I can do this by myself. Like I produced almost every song on it. I wrote everything on it. So it was it was kind of like my, my baby being like, look, I can do this without any of you. I don't need your producers. I don't need your hundreds of thousands of dollars. I can make this song on GarageBand and my fans love it. I feel like that's the coolest thing about the Bedroom Tour playlist because it was my first work of art that was truly a reflection of me. It was actually very random the way that the um, Bad Intentions remix happened. I had no idea that we were even working on a remix of any sort. Like I was like, cool, the songs were really old. Like I have no idea what's going on. And um, it was my tour date in Atlanta. And I was performing and I looked to the side of the stage and the Migos are sitting there and I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. They're here. And they came on stage and they did like an encore at my show. And then afterwards they're like, come to the studio. Like I want you guys to hear like the songs that we've been working on. And we go to their studio and they play the Bad Intentions remix. And I had no idea. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I didn't plan it. I didn't know what was happening. It just kind of happened and it was very organic and natural and I feel like that's why it worked out so well because I couldn't have really chosen or imagined a rapper to put on that song so thank god it just happened by itself. If I could do a remix to one of my songs off the bedroom tour playlist with anyone I feel like because the most important song to me on that playlist is Infinity because I wrote it for my sister and it's like this beautiful lullaby um, and her favorite artist was Bob Dylan. So I feel like I would love if it was a remix with Bob Dylan on it because he's just, I feel like, well, he taught me how to have a song, right? And you know, I have the connection with him and my sister and my brother loves him too. So I feel like it would just be, I have to make that happen somehow. I wonder if he has a Twitter, probably not. <laughs> you gotta grind like, a, like the boys do. They stay in the studio for days. I do 12 hour blocks in the studio now. Like, you gotta have that hustle. It was like, all right, I see what you did with this song, but can you do it again? <laughs> it was like, can you do it again? Can you, you know, was it a fluke? I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> disrespecting me right now. So he ate two cookies and we couldn't find them. So finally, we, we looking around, we done with the session, we done with the song, we finished. And we go looking for this guy. He's downstairs in the lobby, passed out because he sipped some lean and ate the cookies. My whole life, basically, I was involved with a church that said you couldn't wear pants, you couldn't wear jewelry, you couldn't listen to music, you couldn't communicate with people that were not in the church. So like my life was pretty sheltered. 